Welcome to the Good News Ride Home for Friday, July 17th, 2020. I'm Jackson Bird. It's World Emoji Day today, and what does that mean? A new discovery of campfires on the sun, where to score some good deals for National Ice Cream Day this weekend, and an arcade in New Hampshire that did a solid for one of their favorite customers. Here are some of the cool things from the news today. The new Solar Orbiter Project, a collaboration between NASA and the European Space Agency, has just revealed the closest ever images of the sun, and there was something a bit unexpected about them. The images showed a bunch of little bright spots on the sun's surface that appear like billowing flames. Scientists are calling these previously unknown phenomena campfires. And while I say little bright spots, they're actually each about the size of a European country, but they are little when compared to the sun's solar flares, which are a million or billion times larger and observable from Earth. These campfires, by contrast, were only just captured for the first time by the Solar Orbiter's Extreme Ultraviolet Imager, or EUI, at a distance of 48 million miles from the sun which sounds far, but is the closest a camera has ever been to the sun. Quoting Gizmodo, Stellar scientists aren't entirely sure what these campfires are, as they could be pint-sized versions of larger solar flares or something entirely different. That said, their discovery could explain a poorly understood stellar phenomenon known as coronal heating. For reasons that aren't entirely clear, the solar corona is considerably hotter than the surface of the sun, with temperatures more than 200 to 500 times hotter than the layers below. The campfires are a surprisingly ubiquitous feature of the sun's near surface, so while a single mini-flare doesn't do a hell of a whole lot, the collective actions of these features could represent the dominant contribution to the heating of the solar corona, according to Frederick Ocher from the Institute for Space Astrophysics in France and a co-principal investigator of EUI. During an ESA press conference today, Daniel Miller, ESA's Solar Orbiter Project scientist, said the cause of the campfires is still unknown, but he suspects they're related to the sun's magnetic field. Regions in which the flares appear are under pressure and eventually tear, releasing energies which we see as the campfires, end quote. It's pretty cool that the Solar Orbiter, which only launched in February, has already discovered something we had no idea existed until now. And over the course of the next two years, as the Solar Orbiter gets even closer, eventually trekking just 26 million miles from the sun, I'm sure we will make a ton of hitherto unheard of discoveries. Today, July 17th, is World Emoji Day. Yes, yes. It's a thing. World Emoji Day was started in 2014 by the Emojipedia website, which is run by Jeremy Burge, the chief emoji officer of the site and current member and former vice chair of the Unicode Emoji Subcommittee. Burge started World Emoji Day in 2014 simply because he knew that most things had weird holidays, so why not emojis? Back then, emojis were most commonly and easily accessed only on iOS devices, and on iOS, the calendar emoji displayed the date July 17th, which was in reference to the day that iCal for Mac was launched in 2003. So Burge chose July 17th to be the date for World Emoji Day, but as emojis became more common across other platforms, they didn't all use July 17th for their calendar emoji. As you're probably familiar, emojis look slightly different on each operating system and social media platform. In fact, one of the most useful features of Emojipedia is the ability to compare how emojis differ across platforms. So for example, Twitter's calendar icon originally displayed July 15th, which is the anniversary of Twitter's launch date. But as the emoji trend continued, And sidebar, as much as I love them, I remain shocked that emojis have continued to be an unrelenting, ubiquitous, unironic facet of our everyday communications. I really thought they would have gone away by now. But I digress. As the emoji trend continued and World Emoji Day therefore became a more well-known holiday, at least for the media needing something to talk about, more and more companies changed their calendar emoji to also display July 17th in solidarity with World Emoji Day and also to avoid people thinking it's a bug, not a feature, that their emoji displays a different date. 
Today, of the major platforms, only Facebook and WhatsApp still display a different date. Facebook shows May 14th in honor of Mark Zuckerberg's birthday, and WhatsApp shows February 24th, the day WhatsApp was incorporated in 2009. But back to World Emoji Day itself. Apart from headlines and stunts like the Empire State Building lighting up emoji yellow in 2017, it's become a traditional day for companies like Apple and Google to announce new upcoming emoji designs. Today, we got our first look at a number of upcoming emojis for iOS, including a pinata, tamales, bubble tea, the transgender symbol, an anatomical heart, lungs, and the now infamous pinching fingers emoji. Google also shared their final designs for more of the new emojis, including two people hugging, a woman in a tuxedo, and a fresh update to many of their animals, featuring a return to Android's older, more classic design. Later in the year, Google and Apple will both be adding all 117 new emojis announced by Unicode in January of this year as part of Emoji 13.0. It typically takes several months for all of the different emojis to be designed by the various companies, which is why we won't expect to see them on our devices until later this year. And while no one could have expected how relevant the new lung emoji would be for this year, a lot of people have now been calling for more mask-wearing emoji options. Unfortunately, it usually takes two years before emoji proposals, if approved, are turned into actual emojis on our devices, and we therefore aren't likely to see mask-wearing people emoji options other than the current sad, ill-looking face with a mask on it for a while. But Apple will be adding multiple mask options to their Memojis in iOS 14. So also on World Emoji Day, Emojipedia announces three World Emoji Awards, one for the most popular new emoji of the prior year, so 2019, another for the most anticipated emoji coming this year, as voted on by the public, and the emoji that best represents the current year, also voted on by the public. That last category uses a bracket system, and as of recording, it is down to the final two, the virus emoji, or the Black Power Fist. The most popular new emoji from 2019 turned out to be the White Heart. No word just yet on the most anticipated emoji coming up this year, but you can follow Emoji Awards on Twitter for updates. And if you're curious about the least popular emojis, a Twitter bot not associated with Emojipedia or Unicode called Least Used Emoji updates you on the least used emoji every day. And while it used to be fun to kind of watch it change every day, the input symbol for symbols emoji, aka the blue or gray square with four different symbols in it, has been the least used emoji for 247 days straight. So, not the most riveting of daily updates anymore. To celebrate World Emoji Day, Jeremy Burge did an AMA on Reddit this morning. He answered questions about how emojis are chosen, how one celebrates World Emoji Day, I have no idea, Burge, the creator of the holiday, said. If it's nice weather outside, maybe enjoy a walk. And he shared a list of all the proposals that Unicode's emoji subcommittee have ever received, including all of the rejected ones. Rejected emojis include non-bread, a pacifier, an outstretched hand, a tumbleweed, a doge, and whatever winking with a thermometer means. I'll link to that genuinely fascinating list as well as Burge's AMA in the show notes. And finally, I particularly liked his response to a question about where he thinks emojis will be in 10 years from now. Here's what he said, quote, In 10 years' time, we'll still have at least every emoji we have today. I think the main question is how many more that we have. It could go two ways. One, unlimited emojis. Embeddable graphics and or there is a proposal that would allow anything with a Wikipedia entry to be used as an ID for an emoji. That would allow whatever vendors wanted to be an emoji with less time needed on approvals, etc. Or two, fewer emojis. The current set started out imperfect, patching up various issues with the original Japanese set over many years. Maybe now is the time to slow down and keep this as a relatively stable set with what we have now, and maybe just a few more when necessary. End quote. I've always been curious about removing emojis. If that input symbol for symbols emoji has been the least popular for 247 days, should we retire it? That can get into tricky territory, though. 
As Burge pointed out in his AMA when asked about expanding pride flags to include things like the non-binary pride flag or indigenous flags, while they poll very popular online, flags are actually used remarkably little. But, he asks, does that mean we shouldn't make them? Even if they aren't used that often, they mean a lot to some people to have them there. It's about representation and equity, not just which emojis are most popular. Something to think about. I'm always amazed by how much there really is behind these little emojis that we don't typically give too much thought to. Now, more than ever, it is important to stay active and keep moving. It's essential for your physical and mental health. FitBod is the smart fitness app that takes all the guesswork out of planning workouts that you can do right in your home. FitBod's algorithm factors in your goals, experience level, equipment, workout duration, and muscle recovery to intelligently craft the perfect total body workout program just for you. With each workout, the app learns your abilities and plans workouts designed to maximize your results. And by cycling new exercises into the mix, you won't get bored doing the same thing day in and day out. FitBod keeps your workouts fun and fresh. FitBod's easy instructions and HD video tutorials have helped me improve my technique and work out different muscle groups without overworking them, and it seriously makes working out a lot less intimidating. And with FitBod, you get a program tailored to your unique body, experience, and environment. It's perfect for anyone who is looking to get better fitness results, whether your goal is general fitness, strength training, muscle tone, bodybuilding, powerlifting, or Olympic weightlifting. So let's get fit together. Listeners of this podcast can try one month of workouts absolutely free. Get a personalized fitness plan that helps you work out smarter at fitbod.me slash good news. Try FitBod for free for one month when you sign up today at fitbod.me slash good news. That's one free month when you sign up at fitbod.me slash good news. This Sunday, the 19th, is National Ice Cream Day, and as promised, here is a roundup of deals and specials that you can take advantage of to celebrate. So kicking off with Dairy Queen, they'll be doing a dollar off any size dipped cone except the kitty size, and this is exciting news for lactose intolerant folks like myself, they're introducing a vegan dilly bar made with coconut cream and a dairy-free chocolate shell. That new product will also be a dollar off, and I am crossing my fingers that this means maybe one day soon they will make a non-dairy blizzard. It's all I want in life. Anyways, next up is Baskin Robbins. They're partnering with DoorDash to offer a free regular scoop when you order $15 worth of ice cream via DoorDash, which I didn't realize ice cream delivery was a thing that people did, especially for individual scoops, but all right. Sonic is also going app-based. If you download the app, you can get half off a Sonic Blast. And as I record this, the ice cream truck has literally just stopped outside of my apartment. Maybe I should go ask what they're doing for National Ice Cream Day. Anyways, Friendly's is coincidentally celebrating their 85th birthday the day before National Ice Cream Day, so all weekend long, they are selling 85-cent ice cream cones to all of their rewards members. And if you're lucky enough to have a Godiva shop near you, you can get a buy one, get one deal on Sundays and soft serves on Sunday. But since the theme of the summer is staying home, there are also a lot of grocery stores and individual brands running deals. Whole Foods, for example, is offering 35% off all ice creams and frozen desserts for Prime members on Sunday. If you get your groceries via Instacart, you can get a dollar off the dairy-free So Delicious line of pints from now through the end of September. That one runs a while. On Sunday, haagen is going to be running their Fantasy Flavors Scoop Off, in which people are invited to share their most creative flavor ideas with haagen on Instagram. Eight of the top submissions will go into a bracket, and then the winning contestant will receive 15 cartons of their submitted fantasy flavor and coupons for a year's worth of ice cream. Blue Bunny is also doing a fun contest. It is based on the theme of canceled trips, but the prize actually isn't any of their ice cream. So you enter by sending in a photo of your ticket from some type of trip, music concert, sporting event, or even fitness membership that got canceled this year due to the pandemic, and then you will get the chance to win one of 750 prizes related to your canceled event. They're offering things like gift cards for gas or apparel, passes to national parks, bicycles, music lessons, turntables, etc. 
Van Leeuwen is also acknowledging our unique moment and using the holiday to give back. They'll be donating 100% of their profits from Sundays on National Ice Cream Day to Color of Change, the U.S.'s largest online racial justice organization. And here's a fun one. Sensodyne, you know, the toothpaste company for sensitive teeth. If you tweet hashtag Sensodyne Sunday, that's Sunday like an ice cream Sunday on Sunday the 19th, you will be entered to win the fixings to make your own ice cream sundae delivered straight to your door. And of course, they're throwing in a tube of Sensodyne as well to keep your teeth happy after all that sugar. And while these are all the deals from the bigger companies, don't forget to check out your local ice cream shop and consider supporting them, even if they aren't running a deal on Sunday. Small businesses are hurting right now, and I'm sure they would appreciate the extra love. And ending today with a quick story about one of those small local businesses and how they continue to give back to their patrons even after several months of supremely hard times for them. Token's Tap Room, an arcade bar in Dover, New Hampshire, reopened last month at half capacity with plastic sheets in between the games and with strict sanitizing and mask orders in place. Not only do they have free masks on hand behind the bar, but they also used part of the lockdown to make and sell their own arcade-themed masks. So you can already tell this is a business that cares about their community and is willing to go a few steps beyond local orders to stay afloat and keep their patrons safe. Well, a photo they posted their Instagram of just the length that they will go to that end recently went a little viral on Reddit. The photo was of Kenny Borbo, a 70-year-old regular at Token's Tap Room. Kenny is a lifelong pinball player, a registered member of the International Flipper Pinball Association, and a heart patient. Due to being high risk for COVID-19, he knew that he couldn't join in the fun inside the bar even after they reopened with so many precautions. So he told the bar that he would stop by one evening just to say hello from the curb. And when he arrived, the folks at Tokens had surprised him by moving his favorite pinball machine, Scared Stiff, out onto the sidewalk for him to play safely away from the indoor crowd. It's just a great example of how we can all be there for each other, you know, make small accommodations or rig up some temporary surprises to bring a smile to someone's face. So, well done, Tokens Tap Room, and rock on, Kenny. I hope you get the all-time high score on Scared Stiff. That is it for today. As always, this show was produced by Ride Home Media. I'm Jackson Bird. I hope you all have a good weekend, and I will talk to you again on Monday. <laughs>